Welcome everyone. My name is Melissa Colon and I'm the Distance Education Coordinator at Columbia College and also the co-PI for our NSF Multimedia Technician Grant. What we're going to talk to you today about is um, our grant. We're actually in the third year. We're in a no-cost extension, so we've been working hard for the last two years, going on three. And we're going to talk to you about some of the lessons learned uh, with the grant. So my colleagues, Kathy Schultz and Ida Ponder, will also to join me and we'll talk about it. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the program and uh, what we've done. And it's been really exciting the last two years. We did a lot of planning in the first years. I think one of the things that we really um, appreciated about being able to have this grant, it was, um, it was actually matched with the work in, um, Workforce Innovation Project Grant. So we had about $400,000 total for two years. So here are some of the things that we were able to do with the grant and accomplish. And you'll hear a little bit more about that, more focus on some of these areas like the programs of study and our entrepreneurship program. But one of the things that we really did right from the beginning is we connected with an advisory committee. So that was one of the first and foremost important things that we did with our grant. Let's, let's hear from the community. We knew that the grant would provide workforce skills for our students to be able to connect with the business community, to provide skills for them in the multimedia technician realm, and that would be able to help create some jobs. And the goal was so they could actually work where they lived. We live in a rural community up in the foothills. It's beautiful. There's not a lot of industry going on, so a lot of times you want to provide coursework, curriculum, and opportunities for students to keep them in your community. Because a lot of times they get out of high school or they finish the two years of college and they're on to um, another university or, or out of the area. So that was um, a couple of things. We um, had some funds with the grants to help us with marketing. We developed new programs of study, which Kathy Schultz will talk about. We hosted some really wonderful career exploration events through the K through 12 and uh, our college um, itself, we were able to pro provide um, some really great equipment, standard industry equipment, software, hardware for our students in what we call the Instructional Technology Center. And I have a few pictures of that. I'll show you a little bit later. We were able to provide some internships, which really helped the students to make those real world connections. So that was another thing that when we wrote the grant, we really made sure that the students, as they were being trained, they could go out into the community and work and have some experience. One of the things that we, um, we found that in our particular area, there was a lot of small businesses that really needed multimedia support, social media support, but they don't have the funds. So this was another way for our students to be able to connect with them in the community, have an experience, but also provide um, the community, the businesses, with some of this expertise, some of the things that they needed for marketing. So it was pretty exciting in that respect. Uh, we have some more lessons uh, learned from that particular experience. And let's see, we were able to hire a multimedia technician to help us work in the Instructional Technology Center because what was happening is we got this great software and these great tools to use. We had lots of different camera and video equipment. Um, and then we wanted to make sure that if they came into the Instructional Technology Center that they would have support to be able to help them with their projects. So that was another um, really great aspect that the um, grant provided. So what I'd like to do right now is um, turn this over to Kathy Schultz. She's going to talk to you a little bit about the development of curriculum and program studies. Thanks, <clears throat> so before we started um, the grant, we had a variety of classes that we were already offering in our computer science department. We're a very small college, so under that one umbrella of computer science, we have all kinds of things. We have our networking, programming, CIS, digital media. Um, but there were a few gaps, and after talking to our advisory committee, one of the projects we had was to develop some new courses to fill a few of the gaps that we saw that we had. So this is just 
um, a couple of the primary courses that were actually newly developed. Um, and this was really interesting and, and we've offered them, this is the second year now that we've offered some of these brand new courses. Um, the, the 3D animation course I know in the prior session she was talking about um, how well that engages um, students and that's quite true. We found that to be a very popular course. A more challenging course to get the students to understand why we thought it was so important was writing for multimedia. <laughs> and so we um, have really have worked hard to try and come up with some ways to get them engaged in that course because they didn't understand or see the importance of why that was a core class in, um, in when we were developing our curriculum. So um, we also uh, developed sort of an overview introductory type course. Uh, because we felt that a lot of people coming in might be thinking that they'd like to investigate this area, but they weren't sure exactly what would be involved. And so that is a course that um, helps them sort of take a look at the overall industry and what are some of the areas. And again, in the first year or two, it was interesting because we had a lot of students who had already taken a lot of the courses that we offered in this area and they were coming back and taking the overview core class in order to earn the certificate. So they were a little um, challenged by the class because they already had a lot of the knowledge and were already focused in a particular direction. Now we're starting to see more of those new students coming in who didn't know that they wanted to go into multimedia. So the complexion of that course has changed a little bit even in the last uh, two years that we've offered it um, based on the students that were in the course. Yes. Um, the uh, first two or three of the courses, as is the 3D animation, the social media marketing and the Adobe Acrobat courses are actually, I'm going to say, two units, yes? Social media marketing is two units, eight-week course, right. the Adobe Acrobat is what we call a, a one and one it's one unit of lecture, one unit of lab. Mm -hmm. So they're short. So a couple of those are shorter courses. Yeah, you don't need acrobats full semester because you have to do three hours a week of lab. Of lab. So um, these were some of the new courses, but we already had, you know, other courses on the book. <coughs> HTML, Dreamweaver, Advanced Web Topics. We have all the Adobe products for computer graphics and desktop uh, publishing design. We had video production already on the books. So these were actually ones that we had to create to fill some gaps in order to create our certificates. So um, uh, various people, myself and Ida, primarily developed the new courses, took them through curriculum, which you all know is not a quick process. So that was part of our first year. And of course, all this was done with the uh, interaction and feedback from our advisory committee uh, that we built. So the first year of the grant, we developed three small certificates, small meaning um, that they were under 18 units and they were not certificates that we had to apply for approval for through the, um, oh I'm sorry I just blanked out, thank you, through the Chancellor's Office. So we developed these first three and the focus is one of them was on web development, one was on uh, digital media creation and the other, um, and Ida will tell you more about this in a little uh, bit, was about um, entrepreneurship because in our rural areas, um, Melissa mentioned, many of our students who would be getting these certificates and working in this area would most likely be freelance consultants working on their own, running their own business. They weren't necessarily going to be hired by um, a larger company. So we really wanted to make sure that they were aware of that uh, nature of that environment and what they were going to need to be able to do to be successful in that aside from the actual creative work of, you know, create, helping people create multimedia. So <clears throat> these were our original three certificates. We created these in the first year. We got them uh, through curriculum and into our catalog and we marketed them significantly and we got a lot of students uh, aware of our new program and starting to think about coming through. Then we took it to the next step in curriculum development and in the second year of the grant, we basically um, kind of upped 
the game uh, a little bit. And we took the two certificates that were specific uh, areas and we beefed those up with a little bit more content and we went through the process, Ida and I, many hours going through the process of putting in all the paperwork and getting those approved through the uh, chancellor's office. So um, for us at our college, those are called certificates of achievement. I know that name may be different at different schools, but it's the ones that are approved um, by the state. And we kept our um, entrepreneur certificate, but we did not move that one up in content in terms of units. So this remains for us what we call a skills attainment certificate and one that did not have to go through. Now our really big change in the second year is we took these two certificates that were um, sort of had a little different focus, but they had the same core. I'm going to show you the actual certificate in a moment. And they're sort of stackable into the degree. So a person could actually work on the core and the digital media and the web development certificate and then basically I think with one additional class we're able to do the um, core area courses for the degree and then they would add in the general ed and they'd have that AS. So we developed and took your curriculum and got state approval for the AS um, multimedia technology. So at the moment, this um, is the list of awards that we have um, based on the multimedia program grant. So I want to just show you briefly the actual content. Um, I literally uh, snipped these right out of our catalog so they're a little blurry, but I think it gives you the idea. In the multimedia technology degree, we have a core of courses, I think that in here, a selection here, here, and here, um, and the idea is that it, depending on which courses they end up with, there's a little bit of a range in the units and they could combine this with their general ed and they'll have um, an associate's degree. It also gives them an opportunity to have a little bit of a focus. If they had that focus for the web, they can kind of stay with that focus. If they had the focus for the creation of digital content, they can kind of keep that focus with the, the AS degree. But we knew that they needed some of all of those areas. The certificates remain um, <clears throat> one with the focus of uh, creation of digital media, the other a little bit more on web development. Now you might wonder why we chose those two and I'm just going to tell you basically it was a very regional decision based on feedback from our advisory committee. We get calls all the time from companies in our community um, who would like to have help. Sometimes they can pay for it, sometimes they can't, but the two primary areas were really um, video production and mm, like graphics, logo type production help, and the other area was web development and or social media for my company. So that's why based on the calls that we get on a regular basis, we went with those two as our areas of focus. And then just the last one and then another question there, here's the entrepreneurial one. So the difference here is we have an entrepreneurial program on campus and Ida's going to talk about that in more detail, but this one really incorporates more of the courses um, on business plans um, and some of the other areas that they would need to know if they're going to be doing this as a business of their own. I saw a hand, yes. Yeah, um, this is going to be a dumb question. Not at all. Uh, why do you use the word technician in your program as opposed to maybe specialist? Or, um, uh, because when I think of technician, I think of someone troubleshooting more. Mm -hmm. Well, I think so. Again, it's a great question. I think it's one that we've even talked about ourselves. We spent a lot of time choosing between specialists, assistants, mm -hmm. technology, and technology. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there was a little bit more of a need for hardware knowledge. It wasn't just the software and the business aspect of it, and that's another reason why we get a lot of calls from people who wanted someone, could someone come out here and help me set up my video equipment I, and help me figure out how I'm supposed to run that. So it, that's kind of some of the things that came into that discussion. I have to tell you, when we made the AS degree, you'll notice we adjusted that slightly. It's an AS in multimedia technology, whereas the certificates use the technician term. And certainly not set in stone. We may, as we develop this, um, you know, decide that there are changes that we want to make to it as we move along. Um, and that may be something that comes back up again is how we titled it. I think also there was something about the grant in particular that it worked better in our grant proposal, um, which is not always the absolute right reason for doing something, but it did dovetail uh, nicely with what the grant requirements were. And I saw one here and then over here. Yes. Yeah. Since I see you're in California, mm -hmm. is there a reason why, you, other than maybe temporary expediency, you didn't choose to get your 12 to 18 minute certificate state that's absolutely the reason okay. at the moment, yeah. um, was we wanted to be able to get something on there that we could get into the catalog. Um, we sort of had, when you're working on a grant, we have a, a window of time and we had marketing money from the grant during a particular window of time. And we didn't want to be marketing something that they couldn't go for yet. So that, that was exactly, we wanted something up there quick in the first year and then while we moved some of those forward to that next level, we could be marketing the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the program is awesome and I think it's uh, interesting how you tap the community, but being mm -hmm. the real community where you are, yeah. I'm wondering what happened to the agricultural sector, sector. I'm sure you have an agricultural sector, I'm sure you have great stories and cattle raisers and And we, like we do, and tell me though, what do you mean what happened okay, so to the, them? Uh, the next, the next plug-in I would think there would be in here would be a demand for GIS, because most ah. parts, every permit you do when you're right, building, right. Anything like that, you yeah. have to do maps and one thing or another. Right, and we, we actually have an entire GIS program, just to say, let me finish this and I'll come back. We have an entire GIS program on campus in our department, mm -hmm. so it's not that that's not there. So it it's, okay. it's, and maybe in, when Ida talks about future steps, I think that'll be part of that. So I, I want to um, answer questions, but I also want to make sure because Ida has more information that may answer some of those. So uh, one more and then we'll move on. It, it applies specifically. Um, uh, scheduling and cohort of the new classes. Um, how were they scheduled and what um, cohort actually the mm -hmm. classes? Well, <clears throat> Uh, there was not one specific cohort uh, because we had a lot of students who had been taking courses in a variety of areas already. So um, I did have a group of students that took the first uh, overview course together and that was really great because a lot of them were also had known each other from prior courses. Now it's sort of turning the other way around. As we have new students coming in and taking the overview course, um, then we sort of tend to have them uh, end up in the same video production course and, and then they end up in the same uh, courses with Cass Christensen for our computer graphics. But they, um, they don't necessarily purposefully uh, do that. Uh, but we're a small enough school that it's happening fairly naturally, mm -hmm. that, that they see each other. And uh, more importantly, when, when uh, Melissa talks about internships, they are pairing up on internships. So one person got an internship and they needed some help in an area that they were not as familiar in and they grabbed someone that they had been in class with. And so we're actually seeing some great cohort work and some great partnerships forming in that way. And the scheduling of the five classes, was it over two semesters or? Um, yes, uh, we have some of these that we offer only in the fall and we have some that we offer only in the spring. So yes, between, because of course, you know, these are quite a few courses and um, they can earn a certificate in a single year or they can earn the degree in two years um, uh, with the scheduling the way it currently is. Enrollments in the courses? 
Well, I'm not sure if I have numbers off the top of my head. I'm sorry, I'm not particularly good at that. Um, but we, like I said, we're a small college. We're limited by the size of our computer labs. So I would say that most of the hands-on courses typically are filling to the max of the room that's allowed, which is probably um, between 16 and 24, depending on which lab they're in. And the um, we have a smaller lab with the uh, with the new um, IMAX, and that's only 16 right at the moment. So a lot of the computer graphics and the video production and the 3D modeling are taught in that particular lab. So those are slightly smaller classes. Um, we do have some problems as we um, traditionally always have with second semester courses. Right, so the advanced video production and any of the advanced or second follow-on courses, those are always challenging for us to make and we sometimes end up having to um, uh, stack the labs mm -hmm. for a beginning and a follow-on class. Okay. Right, and we've done that with a few of those uh, video production in particular. You would think that that, I mean, the students love doing it and they're so engaged, but for some reason, um, the second class, we sometimes have trouble with. Yeah. Um, so before I move it on to let Ida uh, talk about the remaining, I do have um, a link to our program video here. And um, so this is just a two minute video that was done as a promotional video for our media revolution is a global movement. People can create and collaborate from anywhere in the world through digital file sharing. Now joining the revolution is as easy as registering at Columbia College in Sonora, California. Here a team of professors and mentors are waiting to help you learn, create, and inspire. They can teach you the skills you need with the same equipment and software that expensive art schools use. Best yet, there's no big price tag. I like that, yeah, a better education for the price. This opportunity for students in the small rural environment is amazing because you can work anywhere in the world from this particular locale. Um, these skills are global skills. Companies are requiring that they have a immediate presence and students learning high tech digital skills can work literally anywhere in the globe. Columbia College is proud of its diversity. We work together to form a unique, creative community. I worked for about four years on projects off and on, but I couldn't find consistent work. So when I saw the multimedia program, I came right back and decided, why not? Why not try something different? Try something new? And Columbia College really provides a unique experience, I think, for, for any level of person like that. Because we have very small classes, we have a very intimate group uh, in the class. And we have instructors that are, that are really energetic and really interested in what they're doing. They have programs and certificates in web development, digital media, and entrepreneurship. You can take classes in publication design, digital photography, and video production, computer graphics, 3D modeling, and animation. Master software like Dreamweaver, Maya, and After Effects. Here you can even learn to turn your passion for social media into a lucrative career. We have these software programs, we have faculty, we have people who will support you in whatever project you want to do and whatever dream you have for yourself. Our school prides itself on its internship program and industry connections, all on the stunning campus in the Sierra Foothills. Within the community of this county, I was able to find a production assistant job. I'm working 20 hours a week in video production, and it's a job that I really do enjoy. So if you dream big, but you don't want the nightmare of big debt, or if you simply want to nurture your edge in a school of small classes, cool programs, and big global opportunities, contact Columbia College and join the multimedia revolution. It's your life your world and your turn to learn, create, and inspire. Don't resist. Join the multimedia revolution now. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs>
the link. I, I'd like to introduce Ida Ponder. She's going to talk to you a little bit more about the integration of the entrepreneurship program. Thank you. And by the way, the logos that you see and the create, learn, and inspire, and all of the coloring and all of that that you saw in the video was created in our digital labs by students. So, and now we're using it for our entire CTE program. We also have some um, flash drives back there that you can put in your wallet, um, some cleaners, some pens to help yourself. My business cards are back there, our ink pens. Anyway, I want to talk to you about Columbia College's entrepreneurship program and how we built that into this grant and how it has grown. Now, first, I'm going to start by giving you just a little bit of history on the entrepreneurship program at Columbia College. I was part of what they call the Coleman Scholar through Fresno State and the Lyle Center, and I was also for the state office what they called an entrepreneur champion on our campus. And um, so we started the entrepreneurship program. I'm now in the sixth year, I think, or seventh year of actually having a program. And it started off with I just wrote four courses and made a skills attainment certificate out of those four courses, which what I did was I took stuff from like small business management from an entrepreneur perspective and broke them down into um, eight-week courses at two units apiece. So I start off with the introduction to entrepreneurship. Do they want to be an entrepreneur? Do they have the creativity? Do they have the dream and the desire? And then the second eight weeks of the first semester, they take the marketing for entrepreneurs. Now in the spring semester, they'll start off the first eight weeks taking um, finance for entrepreneurs, which will cover not only this, you know, uh, all of your financial statements, but also how can I get my things, um, my project financed, and then finish off the last eight weeks writing an effective business plan. I offer those in the early evening so high school students can take them. So if they're doing an ROP program like cabinet making, then they can take these four courses during the year. They graduate high school, they've got their ROP, and they've got the skills to be able to go out and open their own business and be ready to go. And we do a lot of business plan competitions and things. So now, I, as I've developed the program, we have more classes. The um, market, social media marketing is actually part of the entrepreneur program. It's the first and as far as I know, the only one in the state entrepreneur program that's outside of the business department. I'm not under that umbrella at all. I'm, it's its own department. Because, and the reasoning behind that was that students that are in culinary or students that are in photo editing or students that are in networking, you tell them they've got to take a business course and they go, oh my gosh. And as far as the marketing goes, they really don't need to know the psychology of why somebody buys. How am I going to market my business? How am I going to get them to buy my product? Let's take out, and that's really all that's missing in the marketing for entrepreneurs is all the psychological study of that particular course. So what we end up doing is being able to give them, as we heard from the keynote speaker, some business skills without them feeling like they're having to take a business class. One thing that's been really exciting about my entrepreneurship program is I've also been able to take these across the curriculum. As you can see, I've got one in the multimedia area. We've got baking for entrepreneurs, culinary for entrepreneurs, welding for entrepreneurs. We've got virtual assistant. Um, as an entrepreneurship degree. I've got a degree and a certificate of achievement in entrepreneurship that have gone through the state. Um, we've got auto body, we've got welding, um, all kinds of, and I am working with the GIS program to do a GIS um, skills attainment certificate for uh, the entrepreneurs and get the entrepreneurship stuff in there. I'm also working with the English department 
and with the music department to do some skills attainment certificates because if they're a musician, they really are their own business and they need to have the skills in order to be successful if they write a book and want to be able to sell their book. So the entrepreneurship program was a natural marriage into this whole multimedia um, grant because really especially when you're in a rural community where, you know, our biggest um, employer in the entire county is our hospital. And then the second largest employer is the um, is a correctional facility, a prison that we have, and the third largest happens to be an Indian casino. So other than that, they all go down to very small businesses. So we don't have some of the opportunities that some of the large cities have with like pairing up with Gallo or something like that. I mean, we don't have those there. But the it's really easy to pair with the Chamber of Commerce and the small business development with the entrepreneurship and be able to pull our multimedia into there. One of the other things that we did with the grant was between the 3D animation course and the entrepreneurship program, we used some of the dollars to buy a 3D printer. And we are under construction with a lot of stuff going on on our campus through Measure E dollars. But when it's all said and done, what's going to happen is we're going to have entrepreneurship on one side of the wall and the 3D modeling and a digital graphics and all of that on the other side of the wall. Kath and I both teach in the evenings, so then her people can help my people create logos and that sort of thing, and then we'll have the um, prototypes, and then we can print the prototypes on the 3D printer. We're also going to have an entrepreneur center, so um, that's going to really tie them together and make a really good marriage for students that are in need of being able to work together to um, to help my students that are maybe planning on I you know I've got students that are um, planning on doing things like I've got one that's doing a farm I've got another one that's planning to write some apps for um, to handle people with disabilities in the community. Uh, I've got another one that's planning to do a nonprofit organization for going out and walking with elderly people so they can get their exercise. I mean, so they're all over the board, but they're not going to be able to deal with making their logos and doing that sort of thing because that's not their bag. So that's where the entrepreneurship fits into this whole thing and um, I, I'm really pretty excited about it. And at Feather River Community College, she's the next largest and again in a very small, we've got the most degrees and certificates in the state in entrepreneurship and Feather River's right behind us because Again, she's rural and I met with Amy Schultz and she took my model. We went and I went up there. She's come down here and she followed that model and has done some really amazing things. So um, it really helps that we're small because we can get, we have a better connection with our colleagues and can make these things happen. So um, Melissa's going to talk to you about our internships and then I'll come back and let you know what our next steps are. As I mentioned, um, we've talked about, you heard a little bit about our um, internships and here's just a list of a few of them. What I think is really exciting for the interns is that, again, they get to have some real world experience and connections with the community. And as Kathy mentioned, we get, we, we actually get so many calls from the community, we can't fill all the internships. So one of the things that we did with the grant, we had some paid internships uh, that we could pay students if the businesses couldn't. But we do try to ask the businesses to pay. Now we're coming to the end of the grant, so we won't be able to have uh, paid internships, but we are asking um, if they can, um, you know, pay something. Maybe they're fingerprinting all the students that become interns have to 
pay for fingerprinting, which is, I think, about $70. Uh, but these are some of the really great projects that the students have been able to work together, whether it was independently as an intern or in a, a collaborative, like, there was a couple of them that worked together on the Friends of the Library, uh, Martin Luther King, um, celebration video, we had fire science video. Uh, one thing we didn't mention, on our campus we really don't have any media services. We are the media services. There is something that needs to be done. Uh, faculty, maybe the tech director will make sure that it happens. We don't really have a department. So when, when our departments heard that we had students that were learning how to do multimedia, they got really excited. So we have campus promo, fire science promo, and other things that went on when there were special events, um, you know, we were requested to maybe send out students to help out with that. So that was really helpful. We hope to continue that. One of the um, projects that I would like to just share with you um, is going on the road, actually. This is probably our signature project. One of our instructors, um, Cass Christensen, was a project lead on this, and um, she worked with a team of interns, and they put together a West Side Trail project. So we have this beautiful trail up in Tuolumne City, and what she put together along with the interns, and she worked with the, the Forest Service, and uh, there was other partners, she put together these trail head signs, lots, lots of different signage throughout the trail. And um, we had a little grand opening for this in um, a couple of weeks, well actually it was before the break. And when people see this, and they've been on the trail since then, it's been written up in the newspaper and um, a variety of articles. People are really interested in taking this model, this show on the road. So it's already been requested that she um, send this out and people can take this and show others in other states what we've actually been able to put together. So it's beautiful. It's just they're on beautiful signs and um, it's going to just enhance the trail. So the students, just to throw in, mm -hmm. we had a student who had been focusing in the web area that helped work with them and she built a website for the um, travel <coughs> display and then she also, we had students who were doing graphics and so they did all the graphics and the editing and the copy for the trail signs which were then etched onto metal signs so they, you know, had the cooperation there of different kinds of um, companies and then what you're seeing here are some of the images that were created on big, um, photo boards to display in our rotunda. So mm -hmm. they were both involved in the actual signage and then in the way to show the project as well. So it was sort of an all of these graphics were created by the students, including that spider. You can see where they had hands on them and then went into the computer and created them. The Forest Service is absolutely exciting. Now these metal engraved signage that talk about the history of the West Side Trail for people hiking and stuff will be there for them to see. That's a beautiful project that was put together. Yes, Melissa, a couple people over here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm a little confused. You're using the term internship since a lot of the work was done on campus. So are, are the students getting uh, credit, like work experience credit through this as well? I didn't see a particular yeah. class for this. So um, well, uh, how are you conducting this? This particular internship. Yeah, yeah, come over here, Ida. This particular internship, yeah. these students were paid. Okay. They were paid for their work. So. Yeah, I had a similar question or um, related one. Was, was it conscious? Uh, the programs didn't seem to have an optional component to take an internship class and get credit for it and stuff like that. So you know that I'm sure that was discussed in your developing of the program. I'm wondering if you could share thoughts yeah, about sure. the thought behind it. So two primary considerations. One, many of the companies that contact us for requesting help <laughs> often were not in a position to be able to pay the students. And we felt that if the student was going to work on an internship, they needed to receive either pay or credit. So we did have that 
conversation. Um, the other issue for us was keeping the units down on the certificates and trying to add in a class often pushed us over the number of units that we could have in a certificate. So um, because we had the grant, the majority of the students who did internships were actually paid um, uh, a stipend for their work. And that money came from the grant. So one of the ways that we're working to sustain that now is to apply for mini grants from our own college foundation to be used for continuing to support the internships if a company cannot pay. So they mostly were paid for their internship work rather than getting units for it. And I think to address maybe your question, they were recruited out of the classrooms. Um, we would have a internship coordinator and we would almost like a posting of these particular internship opportunities and then the instructors would announce it in class. What was interesting though is we didn't have a lot of students running to these particular internship opportunities. We started to ask what's going on. I, we, we figured one of the reasons was they didn't feel like they have the skills yet to actually jump into a full-fledged internship. So we're still working on that, um, the internship program, and um, trying to perfect that. So it's been very interesting. So the internship coordinator that Melissa mentioned, that was a position that was supported by the multimedia grant. And again, as we move off the grant, that position has grown to be an internship coordinator for the entire CTE division. So they're supporting that position that came from the grant initially to help with organizing internships among all of the CTE programs. Um, but the students had to fill, have a resume. They had to sort of apply for the internship. Um, they sometimes had to actually interview with someone before they were accepted for the internship. So the whole process was a great learning experience experience for them. They didn't uh, just get to be assigned to it. And we also made sure that the employer sent a scope of work and that the work was not sweeping the floor and calling them an intern. That they were actually um, you know, doing the job that we wanted them to intern for, whether it was video production or graphic design or web design or whatever. And the other thing that we made sure of is that the employer understood that these students weren't coming completely polished and they needed to assist them to to mentor them and be mentors to them. Um, the next thing that I'm going to talk about will um, show you the website where you could actually go online and see some of the documentation we have for the internships because we had to come up with several documents. Things for the employers to understand, things for the students to understand. So it was quite the developing um, project and program. Uh, but this is some of the other things that have come out of the grant is we have an instruction, instructional technology center. At first it was just the instructional technology center and I was working out of that as the distance education coordinator. But then when we got the grant we were able to combine it with the multimedia classroom. So I, at first I thought, oh, this is going to be hard to schedule. But it's really proven to be a, a wonderful, for now, because we don't have the space, and I don't mention that we're kind of in swing space and moving around. But really having those two, the classroom and the center together, has brought more students in. Because the Instructional Technology Center was designed basically to be able to um, help faculty, staff, and students to produce multimedia projects, even before we had the grant. But now that we have all the iMacs and all the uh, equipment, the digital camera equipment, it has brought not only faculty and staff back to work with some of the equipment and to learn new programs, but of course the students have that support. That was very important because that, that support is important even for the internships because we wanted to provide them an opportunity. If they were out there in an internship, then it was important for them to know they could come to the ITC, the multimedia technician or their instructors could be available for them um, to give them some support if they got stuck because they're not 
it was like someone mentioned the other session, you know, you just jump in and, and you give them this project. Well, I like to call it the full immersion approach, and for some of those students, they still needed that support. So there, there's just some pictures just to share with you. That is our website, and I can give you that. Um, URL address, you can go on there and look at all the things we've done um, for the program and especially for the internship. Did you? Do you have a coordinator for the center? Do you have faculty to staff it? Is that how it works? Well, I'm actually the coordinator for the ITC. I'm the distance education coordinator, but it becomes very convenient for me to work out of the ITC because I do my trainings there. Yeah. So I'd like, okay, five more minutes. All right, so Ida has some exciting things to share with us about the future. Make sure I do this. Okay, our future directions. Well, basically what we're hoping to do is maybe apply for another grant. And what we would like to do with this grant is, like I said, we'll have the Entrepreneur Center, but what we'd like to put inside of that area and in conjunction with the Entrepreneur Classroom that we will have is we'd like to put in, number one, a testing center. There's lots of students that we do not have a testing center on our campus at all, and finding people to proctor test is very difficult around their schedules. We would also like the testing center so that students can do things like get the industry certifications that we've heard talked about and that sort of, and be able to test on campus. Also, we would like to put in a help desk so students can go in and practice, you know, being able to answer the phone and do some help desk and, I mean, what better way to learn than to be teaching. And one of the other things we had talked about was having students like in the um, a plus certification class being able to, through the Help Center, offer help to faculty and staff on doing small upgrades of say memory or helping them get viruses off of their computers and, and that sort of thing. So that's one of the areas we're, we're hoping to lead into to help expand and pull everything together with the multimedia entrepreneurship. Um, and our programming, networking, A-plus certification courses and all of that. We have, I think it's ACE certification for our automotive. Students have to go to Sacramento to do their testing. We do have a couple of tests they can do on campus and scheduling has to be done during a time frame that fits with one gal. And so it could really expand what students are able to do and the skills they're able to acquire by adding these extra things to our campus. So that's kind of our our thought process on there. So I don't want to keep you anyway. So those are our that's our dream in the future. Um, any questions about what we've done, where we're going? Yes. This uh, environment, you're in there, this rural environment, and the people starting their own companies or whatever. I mean, are you actually seeing results in that? Are, are people starting their businesses? Absolutely. I've got some really cool success stories. There's a place downtown called Sunbeams. It's a small children's clothing store. They're very pricey and for our area I'm thinking, wow, how are you going to make it? They're in their third year and they did um, some donations for our students on campus for the kids at Christmas time for Christmas gifts um, that was pretty phenomenal. Got a, another couple that have a really amazing operating um, goat farm, providing goat milk, and that sort of thing. So we have some successes. Yes? Do you have a connection to your child development or age childhood programs or what you go to in the um, children's centers or work on campus? I do have some, and we are, they've been, 
kind of busy and because they got a new center, one of the instructors, or we only got two, two full-time instructors, uh, just had a baby, and, but we are working to do um, some entrepreneurship piece with them, absolutely. Yes. I think this, is this question is for you. Um, are these courses offered online? Are some of them or are they hybrid or how are they? No. no. Uh, Oh, oh, yeah. Maybe one is, is the PowerPoint is something um, that involves in I the, was going to uh, say, uh,